In an earlier video, we saw that fasting and the combination of calorie restriction plus fasting extends lifespan. And if you missed that video, it'll be in the right corner. But for a quick review, there were five groups of mice in this study. Ad lib AL, both one and two days of fasting, two separate groups, and then another two separate groups of 20 and 40% calorie restriction. In terms of the lifespan increases, we can see that both fasting groups significantly increased their median lifespan. The 20% calorie restricted group was a bit better and the best of the bunch was 40% CR. But then the authors of this study saw that many mice lived past 35 months and in all groups, this effect wasn't just restricted to the calorie restricted or to the one or two days of fasting groups, but also some of the mice in the ad lib group, AL, where they ate as much as they wanted whenever they wanted, also lived relatively long or past 35 months, which then led the authors of this study to ask the question, what might contribute to a longer lifespan independent of group assignment? So regardless if the mice were in ad lib or fasting or calorie restricted groups. So to do that, they looked at a bunch of biomarkers with levels on the y-axis plotted against the adjusted lifespan correlation on the x. And without going through all of the data, I'm just going to highlight a couple of biomarkers on this plot. One biomarker were lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cell. So having relatively higher levels of lymphocytes when the mice were 16 months old was significantly correlated with a longer lifespan, regardless of which group that the mice were in. So they didn't have to necessarily be calorie restricted or fasted. And then on the other hand, having a relatively higher RDW or red blood cell distribution width was significantly correlated with a shorter lifespan. And again, independent of group assignment. Now, where the story gets interesting is that lymphocytes decline, whereas the RDW increases during aging. So mice that were able to resist age-related changes at relatively younger ages, this was significantly correlated with a longer lifespan. So just to highlight that data, the lifespan data for lymphocytes and the RDW, that's what we'll see here. This is data from the same study with lymphocytes plotted on the y-axis, uh, plotted against age on the x. And for all five groups, we can see that lymphocyte levels decline during aging. On the other hand, for the RDW on the y-axis, plotted against age again on the x, here too, all five groups significantly increased RDW during aging. So once again, to highlight these data, Mice that were able to resist age-related changes for lymphocyte levels declining and the RDW increasing had significant, increase, significant increases for lifespan, as shown by the lymphocyte correlation on the right and the RDW correlation on the left. So these data are in mice. What about in people? And the story is actually very similar. So for the RDW, it increases during aging. And that's what we'll see here with the RDW plotted on the y-axis against age on the x. And then we can see the age-related increase up to 85 years with a steeper increase for people older than 85. Now, the importance of that age-related increase for the RDW in people is that a relatively higher RDW is significantly associated with an increased risk of death for all causes, just like the data in mice. All right, so this is a biohacking focused channel and the name of the channel is Conquer Aging or Die Trying. So in order to achieve that goal or, and not die trying, I try to optimize all of my biomarkers towards youth, minimizing all cause mortality risk, which I expect will be, uh, it should improve my health and potentially increase or maximize my lifespan. So I have 51 tests for the RDW over the past nine years. And that's what we'll see here with RDW plotted on the y-axis against age on the X. And in terms of the correlation in my data over those 51 tests over the past nine years, we can see that there's a significant inverse correlation for RDW with chronological age. In other words, I've resisted or reversed the age-related increase for the RDW. Now, in the longevity space, there's a lot of over uh, hype and over, you know, there, uh, over, overconfidence for results. And I'm not here to say, oh, I've resisted aging and I've, I've stopped aging. That's not at all what I'm here to say. I don't know what my data was, or I only had very few data points before uh, when I was 42. So I can't undo the first 42 years of whatever RDW might do to aging. On the other hand, can I keep the RDW relatively low indefinitely? And if I can keep it relatively low indefinitely, what will that do to my health and potentially lifespan? Based on the animal data, if I'm able to keep RDW relatively low and resist an age-related increase, that may lead to longevity. All right, so what about lymphocytes? So just like the animal data or the mouse data, lymphocytes decline during aging in people too. 
And that's what we'll see here with lymphocyte levels on the y-axis plotted against age on the x. And in terms of the age-related decline for lymphocytes, we can see that with the red line. And in youth, average values are around 2,100. All right, so once again, we can see that uh, having higher lymphocytes is a part of the youthful phenotype, but also having relatively higher lymphocytes is associated with a reduced risk of death for all causes. And I've covered this in an earlier video. If you missed that, I'll link to it in the right corner. All right, so what's my data? Just like the RDW, how am I doing in terms of lymphocytes? So over those same 51 tests over the past nine years, we can see that here with lymphocyte levels on the y-axis plotted against age, chronological age on the x. And unfortunately, I have a significant age-related decline for lymphocytes over this nine-year period, 51 tests. Now, the goal is to keep them relatively youthful, around 2,000 for as long as I can. So if I can keep them youthful for as long as I can, can I flatten mortality risk and, again, potentially improve my health and maximize longevity? So then that raises the question, can I get my can I resist this age-related decline and get it closer to that 2,000 average value found in youth? And then what's the approach? How can I do that? What's the approach for slowing or potentially slowing age-related biomarker changes? So for those who don't know, I've tracked all of my food using a food scale since 2015. I've then entered those daily food amounts into Chronometer, which is a diet tracking app. And I'm not here to say they're the best, but that's what I've used since 2015. I then take chronometer data and then manually input that into a spreadsheet, both macros and micronutrients, and also foods. So then each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. In other words, if there's a 50-day period in between blood tests, because I'm rigorously tracking diet, I take the average 50-day intake. That then lines up with the latter blood test. So now each blood test has an average dietary intake, and with enough track data for both, I can look at correlations. And I should note that I don't only use this approach for diet. I also do this with supplements, so using supplements in conjunction with tracked biomarkers, fitness metrics, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, also looking at correlations with biomarkers, sleep metrics. This approach can be used for basically everything. So then I calculate correlations for diet, in this case with biomarkers, which then raises the question, what can I potentially do to increase lymphocytes? Now, I won't go through all of the data. I post correlations on the correlations tier on Patreon. But one factor that may be related to having relatively higher lymphocytes, at least in my data, it may be different for others, and I can't extrapolate my findings onto others, I would recommend tracking your own data to see what may, what may be a part of the story for you. So at least in my, in my data, one variable that's significantly correlated with higher lymphocytes is calorie intake. So here we've got lymphocyte levels on the y-axis plotted against the average dietary calorie intake that corresponds to each blood test. And then we can see that significant positive correlation between lymphocyte levels with the average daily calorie intake. Now, if I want to increase my lymphocyte levels and resist that age-related decline based on extrapolation of these data, it would suggest that somewhere around 2,800 calories may get me to an average lymphocyte level of 2,000. Whereas more recently, I've been averaging closer to around 2,100 or 2,150. And you can see that three of my worst lymphocyte levels over the past nine years are on that side where calorie levels have been relatively low. And just as a quick aside, when considering that my recent intake is closer to around 2,100 calories, when considering that my highest intake that corresponds to any blood test over the past nine years is 2,800, that's about a 25% calorie restricted diet. Now, exercise is a big part of the approach too, so I'm not purely CR, so just as an FYI. All right, so these data then raise the question, what calorie intake may be best for lymphocytes without messing up other biomarkers? Now, a big part of my approach is not just focusing on one biomarker at a time, but making one biomarker improve or trying to improve one biomarker without messing up others. Or can I improve one biomarker or a group of biomarkers more than I've made other biomarkers worse? So that would be a net positive intervention. So with that in mind, what calorie in intake may be best for lymphocytes without messing up other biomarkers? And the reason I raise that question is because a relatively higher calorie intake in my data is significantly correlated with a lot more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. Now, I track regularly a panel of about 25 standard clinical chemistry biomarkers, but also other things like blood pressure. Uh, so in that 25 panel, it's blood and uh, blood pressure and uh, blood pressure, uh, sorry, blood biomarkers and also blood pressure, but I'll probably also add sleep metrics, including slow wave sleep percentage into that uh, list relatively shortly or relatively soon. 
Nonetheless, for that panel of 25 biomarkers, we can see that many of them are significantly correlated with calorie intake and going in the wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk. So on this table, we've got the correlation coefficient, the lowercase r. Then we can see the p-value. Each of these has a p-value less than 0.05 as the threshold for statistical significance. So each of these biomarkers is, is significantly correlated with calorie intake based on the p-value. And then in the far right is the lowercase m. That's how many blood tests that I have that correspond to calorie intake. Now, this list isn't sorted in any particular order, but I put the RDW at the top of the list to highlight because you know we've highlighted it in the video. And we can see that there's a strong positive correlation in my data with calorie intake with the RDW. And note that a strong correlation is defined as having a correlation coefficient greater than 0.7. So we can see here, here that the correlation coefficient is 0.71. In other words, for whatever reason in my data, a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with a higher RDW, which we know from all of the data that I've just presented is going in the wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk, and also potentially longevity, at least based on the mouse data. So if I'm going to increase calorie intake with the goal of increasing lymphocytes, I might also mess up the RDW. But that's not the only biomarker that may be affected by or impacted by calorie intake. So just to go through some of the others on this list, uh, two liver enzymes, alkaline phosphatase and aspartate aminotransferase, those are also positive correlations with calorie intake. In, in other words, a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with higher levels of these two enzymes. Relatively higher levels of these two proteins are significantly correlate or sig significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So I've given them red arrows. That's going in the wrong direction. DHEA sulfate declines during aging. So that inverse correlation also going in the wrong direction. Similarly, HDL declines during aging. So a higher calorie intake being correlated with a lower HDL is going in the wrong direction. LDL is somewhat debatable. And we can debate this in the comments if you like, but LDL levels are relatively low in youth. They peak in midlife, and then they decline again towards the end of life. So whether this positive correlation is a sign that I'm moving towards midlife data for LDL uh, or not is very debatable. So I, I haven't given it a red or green arrow for now. Higher, higher uh, sorry, HSCRP, so higher inflammation, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, significantly correlated with higher calorie intake, going in the wrong direction. Pro-inflammatory uh, immune cells, like the combination of neutrophils and monocytes, positive correlation, also going in the wrong direction. They increase during aging, as does HSCRP. Platelets, that gets a green arrow because platelets decline during aging, so a higher calorie intake would seem to resist that age-related decline. SBP, systolic blood pressure, increases during aging, so that's going in the wrong direction for its correlation with calorie intake. And last but not least, uric acid also increases during aging, so that positive correlation with calorie intake going in the wrong direction. So we can see that in terms of calorie intake, if I increase it or by incre increase it by too much, I, mess, I may mess up a whole bunch of biomarkers while potentially improving lymphocytes. So to get back to the original question of what calorie intake may be best for lymphocytes without messing up other biomarkers, I've made a small increase to my calorie intake over the past couple of tests, up from my lowest intake over the past nine years, which was 2080 calories per day. So current intake is around 2150. Now in support of that small increase for calorie intake, two tests ago, lymphocyte levels were 1895, much better than those three tests that were less than 1600 earlier this year and closer to that 2000 average level that's found in youth. And for blood test data that came in from October 25th, which is not included in this plot, lymphocyte levels were 1877, which again is closer to 2000 than it is to the less than 1600. So for now, I'm gonna stay at 2150 for the small potential increase in lymphocytes and note that that small increase in calories didn't mess up these other biomarkers that are on the right. So using a data-driven approach to try to figure out what might be optimal for calorie intake with the goal of improving lymphocytes and improving the RDW with the goal of longevity. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon where I post all biomarker correlations with diet and a whole bunch of other metrics, but also I offer blood tests, blood test consults. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself while also helping to support the channel, including uh, ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood test data, clearly filtered, water filter, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, NAD, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also GrimAge, green tea, dye tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. 
We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.